Ahoy and welcome to the short stuff. I'm Josh and there's Chuck and I am a born and raised Toledoan. So yeah. I am in a very peculiar position to speak about this. Peculiar meaning special in every way. And I get to show off my slack. <laughs> yeah, you pink boy. I'm going to kick back and just listen. Uh, did you ever get that key to the city? No, I have not. And it bothers me every night while I'm trying to sleep. Weren't you offered or no? There was a Toledo, and I don't remember his name, but he was a dedicated Stuff You Should Know listener some years back who said, I am going to get Josh the key to the city. And you too, I believe. Oh. Um, he was working very hard to make it happen. Got in touch with some local politicians, I think was brushed off and then, you know, called it a day. So that moment happens where like you and I are standing at the hotel check-in. And they look at you and they go, are you going to need two keys? And you look at me and I'm like, eh, I wouldn't mind a key. Sure. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. All right, I guess two. <laughs> but, but this will be on a podium with the mayor. <laughs> well, maybe I think that you should have the key and, and cut with the giant scissors. Okay. And I'll just be there and support you. Well, either way, I mean, I would be more than happy to share the key to the city with you. I mean, everything that we've done with stuff you should know we've done together. So Yeah, but I'm not from I feel Toledo. Like you deserve it. But right, you could be an honorary citizen, too. Let's move on from this petty dispute. Wait, wait a minute. I'm not done yet. <laughs> All right. We are talking about Toledo today because Toledo, my hometown, did something pretty amazing a few years back. And as far as I can tell, they are still very much working on it, right? I love this idea in spirit. Uh, the Global Alliance for the Rights of Nature a.k.a. GARN, is a network of organizations and people from more than 100 different countries that are actually pushing for legal bodies and systems around the world to recognize nature and ecosystems as having rights. Yes, which you're like, what? That's stupid. Consider this. Corporations are considered artificial people yes. under the law. We they have a lot of the that. same rights. Yeah, they have a lot of the same rights as you and me. So if corporations can have personal rights, why shouldn't nature? Amen. It makes even more sense to me than a corporation having personal rights. And that's kind of the push and the, 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 the angle that people are coming from is like, look, this thing is being harmed. And sometimes it can be really difficult to show you have standing, which means you are being directly harmed by, say, polluting into right. Lake Erie. Um, and it would be much easier to, like, get something done through the courts if this thing that was actually suffering the harm, the body of water, say, like Lake Erie, had those rights, because then you could sue on its behalf in court. Yeah, I love this idea. Like, where the ecosystem is the actual injured party, but when it yeah. clearly is. Be yeah, because it is. Uh, Ecuador has done this. The, they were the first country to recognize rights of nature mm -hmm. in their actual constitution in 2008. Uh, and it is, quote, uh, it means nature has, quote, the right to exist, persist, maintain, and re regenerate its vital cycles. This seems like a no-brainer. No, it really of does. Of course nature too. has the right to do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, Bolivia as well in 2010 with their mm -hmm. Universal Declaration of the Rights of Mother Earth. Uh, was adopted there. So there, this is actually happening at places in the world. Yeah. Ecuador, Bolivia, and Toledo, Ohio, uh -huh. basically, are the <laughs> leaders in this. And so the, the whole thing with Toledo started um, after, uh, I think, in August of 2014, there was a terrible incident where there was a cyanobacteria algae bloom. And cyanobacteria is very much toxic to humans. And it got into the water intake crib uh, in Lake Erie that supplies Toledo with its um, stock for the, the water that it sends through its taps to people's homes. And for three days, the people of Toledo could not bathe. They had no water to drink. They couldn't cook. They had no water all of a sudden for three days until the uh, the water company could figure out what to do about this. People were having to cross state lines to get bottled water. It was a nightmare. It was a mess. And that really prompted some people to get involved and be like, okay, enough is enough. That's Those algae blooms are not supposed to be happening. They're the result of uh, irresponsible fertilizing practices by local industrialized agricultural groups that are polluting the lake through runoff, and we're all suffering from this. We need to figure out what to do. 
That's right. And we'll take a break right now and talk about a great Toledoan and American named Marky Miller right after this. Well, now when you're on the road, driving in your truck, why not learn a thing or two from Josh and Chuck? It's Stuff You Should Know. Stuff You Should Know. All right. All right, Josh Clark, one great Toledoan. Marky Miller, another great Toledoan. Yeah, I think between me and Marky Miller, Marky Miller should probably get the key to the city. Jamie Farr? Great Toledoan. Jamie Farr was really from Toledo, right? Yeah, he really was. It wasn't just part of Klinger's character. He really was. He always talked about Tony Pacos, which is still around. I love it. So Marky Miller uh, is a longtime uh, Toledoan who... Uh, after this water fiasco, got fed up and started tried to get some answers. Went to the town hall meetings, did all the things as a citizen that you can do. And they to like, how can we, you know, make sure this doesn't happen again? And they basically said, let's move forward about mitigation, but we don't really want to talk about what caused this in the first place. Like, let's just kind of brush that under the rug. And Marky Miller said, no, not good enough yet, yet. And so Marky Miller, in her late twenties. Started attending these meetings with and getting kind of people kind of riled up on her side. Mm-hmm. And uh, they named themselves the Toledoans for Safe Water. And this eventually led to what's known as drawing up the Lake Erie Bill of Rights. A handful of people saying that they're fed up and this lake, this exquisite great lake, actually needs to be protected uh, with its own Bill of Rights. Yes. Um, and what one of the sad things about Lake Erie is, like, it used to be really bad off. Like, it was not a thing that you wanted to swim in, which coincidentally was the time when I was swimming in Lake Erie <laughs> as a kid. Oh, you're <laughs> but fine. I remember catching fish and, like, some guy uh, going past out to the lake on his boat, and my dad and I fishing on this channel, and him being like, do not eat that. Like, just throw it back. And I, I remember being like, what is this guy talking about? And my dad's like, yeah, we really shouldn't eat the fish out of here. He like, had a what? mouthful of raw st- striper. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was still alive in my mouth. Um, but, the, but, but Lake Erie got cleaned up. It was a success story. And then now it's getting repolluted again. So that makes it even more tragic. And it makes that campaign for the Lake Erie Bill of Rights like even more vital. And it wasn't just Marky Miller and the Toledoans for Safe Water who were all about protecting Lake Erie, they had to get a bunch of um, signatures to get a uh, to get it for, on a petition to have a bill introduced f- to be put up to a vote on how to protect Lake Erie's rights. And they got, I think, double the amount needed of signatures to get the petition on the ballot. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Everybody's on board. Everybody wants to support uh, Lake Erie and get it cleaned up and give it its own like let's let's get a lawsuit going on behalf of Lake Erie. Like how cool is that? Yeah. So they get double the signatures, and they knew that was step one, and getting it actually to a vote would be tough. And I believe they uh, were up against you know who you would think they would be up against these big industrial companies that said no, actually that'd be really bad for us if we couldn't pollute the lake. That'd be bad for our business. There was a three hundred thousand dollar uh, anti-Libor campaign, um, even though it passed by 61% in 2020. They came out with a victory, Mm -hmm. a very sad and short-lived victory, because about 12 hours later, uh, an agricultural company filed a lawsuit against the city and said, this law is detrimental to our business. we got to pollute that lake, you guys. (laughs) Right. Um, There was a guy, the judge in the case, Judge Jack Zuhari, basically said, like, this is terrible. This is a terrible law that Toledo passed. Like, it makes sense in its spirit, and, like, I respect it for that, but it was really poorly written. And basically what he said was twofold. One, it's way too vague to be constitutional. He said that you could conceivably, under the law, be prosecuted for fishing in Lake Erie. Um, A second one is that Toledo extended its protections across Lake Erie. Lake Erie is shared by a bunch of different cities from Toledo to Cleveland to 
Buffalo, New York, to Erie, Pennsylvania, they're all on Lake Erie. And this, 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 the, the law crossed state boundaries and state jurisdictions. Like, like Toledo was the, the, you could, you could dump something in Buffalo, New York, and you could be sued in Toledo, Ohio for it because of this law. So it was a overreach, but it was a, a good first step. And I think it shows that the public is like on board with this. It's just that they, they, we need to figure out how the law needs to be written to, to make it survive court challenges. Right. And also, and I think, uh, I think Miller is right in in her contention that like she said, "quote You have to redefine what it means to win." Like mm-hmm. I don't think they thought, "Well, this is it. We're done." They knew it would be short lived. They knew it would probably be overturned. But what it did was make the news, and it's one more step closer to change. Exactly. And so there are um, there are more um, rights of nature movement. Um, movements, I guess, that are kind of popping up around the the country and around the world um, in places like Hawaii and Florida, like you would expect, and in Washington state. Um, And it's a I think it's a great way to to, I think that's a good direction to be progressing. I think it's a it's I think it's the future. Agreed. Well, cool. Well, there's not much more to say about it right now, but who knows? We'll be talking about it hopefully in a few years when it is the law of the land across the globe. And by the way, uh, we found this article originally on How Stuff Works, and you can go read it there if you like. And with that, Short Stuff is out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.